How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the House of Horror and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite web series of all time, Cinemassacre's Monster Madness by James Rolfe. It's no secret that Cinemassacre has been a huge influence on me. It's what ignited my passion for reviewing films, starting a YouTube channel, and was one of the direct inspirations for the House of Horror with their annual Halloween tradition, Monster Madness. This horror review marathon ran for 10 seasons from 2007 to 2016 and featured 31 videos for the 31 days of October. Some years had a certain theme such as cult classics or all the films in a particular franchise, but some years were just a random hodgepodge of films from many different eras and styles of horror. Today, to pay tribute to this legendary series that's super close to my heart, I am going to be ranking every Monster Madness season from worst to first, in my opinion. Honestly, I recommend checking out all of them, but these are just my personal opinions of which seasons I like the best. This ranking is not only based on the quality of the reviews, but also the quality of the films that he's talking about. Obviously, the more interesting the film, the more interesting the review, the more interesting the season. I've seen them all many, many times over, and watching them is just as big of a Halloween tradition for me as carving pumpkins, trick or treat treating or anything else. It's synonymous with the holiday for me. Not only are they all incredibly entertaining and informative, but the series has turned me on to so many horror films throughout the years that I otherwise would have never heard of. It's been a huge influence on me and I'm here to share my love for it with you. Here it is, my top 10 Cinemassacres Monster Madness. This is number 10. 80s-a-thon from 2012. Had it been under a different set of circumstances, I feel that this could have been one of the more fun Monster Madness seasons. Sadly, it was at a time in James's life when he was extraordinarily busy shooting Angry Video Game Nerd the movie. As such, this is the only official season of Monster Madness that has less than 31 episodes. Instead of a video every day, it was every other day, which is still a ton. Trust me, I can tell you how hard it is to put these things together. But when comparing it to the other seasons, it's undoubtedly the weakest due to the circumstances. And it's unfortunate fortunate because the 80s theme had a ton of potential with lots of obscure films that could have been covered. And I also feel the choices of films James picked this year wasn't really the best. It does have its highlights though, particularly the reviews of Pumpkinhead, Twilight Zone the movie, and The Toxic Avenger. I also really love the intro. It's really fun and it looks like the horror promos you'd see on TV or on old VHS tapes back in the day. It's still worth a watch, but just know that the other nine seasons are superior. So don't go anywhere. It's Cinemassacre's Monster Madness, 80s-a-thon. <laughs> Number 9. Sequel-a-thon 2 from 2013. Sequels in most cases can't live up to the original, and that is true of Sequel-a-thon 2, the sequel to the superior Sequel-a-thon. What sets this season apart from its older brother is that the franchises, in my opinion, just aren't as interesting as they were in the first, which we'll get to later. This season covers all the original Mummy movies, the Gamera flicks, the Hammer Frankenstein series, the Alien franchise, and George Romero's Dead films. All of these are great franchises, obviously, but it sort of comes off as a B-rate version of previous franchises that were covered in depth in other seasons. One thing that does set the season apart from all other seasons, however, is it does feature a full-length commentary over Night of the Living Dead since it's public domain. As far as the regular videos go, I'm partial to the Mummy overview and the Gamera films, and these are the reviews I've revisited the most from this year. This season was also during when James was finishing up the ABGN movie, so maybe that had something to do with just why most of these reviews just aren't as memorable to me. One thing I do really love about the season is the little title cards on every episode. They're really well done and push you in the perfect mood to watch the video that follows it. With its ups and downs, this year wasn't bad by any means, but there are far greater years to come. It's Cinemassacre's Monster Madness. Number 8. From here on out, this top 10 list gets really hard for me, as it was pretty tough to put the remaining 8 seasons into order, because honestly, they're all great. The first two on this list were kind of easy to decide, but each season on this list from here on out is just slightly better than the last. With number 8, we're going with Monster Madness 8 from 2014. This season was a return to form to the original format of Monster Madness after the ABGN movie was released. Although, it's probably likely he was working on a few of these videos while he was still finishing up the movie. The films don't really have a theme to them, it's just a random
random grab bag of horror from throughout the years. He also doesn't go in chronological order that he had done every season leading up to this. So every day, it was a genuine surprise what you were going to get. Since up to this point, the films would always go in order. Plus, the freedom to review whatever you want with no specific theme really opens up the doors and lets you just pick any random good film you want to talk about. He's got some really great ones that he covers this year, like one of my favorite silent films, Hex and Witchcraft Through the Ages, the infamous Bram Stoker's Dracula, and one of my favorite recent horror films, Trick or Treat. Overall, this year is a great return to form, and it's more of what you'd expect. After two years in a row with the videos being slightly below the standard, this gets Monster Madness back on track. Cinemassacre's Monster Madness. Number 7. Monster Madness 3 from 2009. This year was a history of horror that shows off some of the secondary classics. The original Monster Madness focuses on the absolute essentials with a few wild cards thrown in. And this season does highlight a few more essentials that were left out, but it's primarily films that either aren't as popular or can be seen as maybe one stop short of classic. This year has some of my all-time favorite reviews like Monsters Crash the Pajama Party, which is a collection of random short films, home movies, and 3D gimmicks all thrown together on one DVD with no labels telling you what you're going to watch next. As I mentioned, this year's History of Horror dives a little deeper into some lesser tier horror films like the Child's Play series, Hellraiser, and for back in the early days, the old Dark House and Freaks. It also features some more cultish type films, which we would get a lot more in a different season of the show. Here he talks about films like The Brain, Daughter of Horror, Cemetery Man, and the greatest monster movie ever made, The Giant Claw. This was a really fun year for Monster Madness's early days, but let's take a look at how the series went out. Cinemassacre's Monster Madness. Number 6. Monster Madness 10 from 2016. The final Monster Madness comes in around the halfway point on our list. James really wanted to go out with a bang this year, and every day of the week was a different type of video, such as Bloodthirsty Thursdays, Frank and Friday, and what really sets this season apart, Top 10 Tuesdays. This was the first and only year to feature Top 10 lists, and it covers James's recommendation of horror films throughout the decades. These videos are a nice change of pace from the traditional Monster Madness episodes. My only gripe with them is that the wording he uses is basically the same as they were in previous reviews. So it's it does come off as a little bit repetitive at times. But if you don't have time to go watch all of the previous reviews, this is a great way to summarize some of the best films and put them in order if you wanted to check them out for yourselves. Besides the top 10 list, the season features a lot of recent horror films such as The Babadook and Oculus among others, but also features some classics that have been left out in previous years like Eraserhead, Wicker Man, and Metropolis. He even covers a history of the Midnight Spook Show and Wolfman vs. Dracula, which is a film that never even got made. This year was a great finale for the Monster Madness franchise, and it looks like it was a ton of fun to put together. Not much else to say other than go check it out. It's Cinemassacre's Monster Madness 10, the final marathon. Number 5. Monster Madness 9 from 2015. This was the first year James tried something new with Monster Madness, rather than it just being regular reviews every day. We already discussed how Season 10 introduced Top 10 lists, but this season features more casual, unscripted videos with Mike Matei. There are still regular, straightforward reviews on top of this, like reviews of House on Haunted Hill and Carnival of Souls, but the unscripted videos where just the two of them hanging out talking is what really makes this season enjoyable to me, and sets it apart from the rest. I love these videos where it's just the two of them either reviewing a film they've both seen, playing a game like Is It Horror? where they try to define whether a film can be categorized as horror or not, and just reminiscing about Halloween memories from their childhood. It was a nice change of pace and also what I think helped shape the more loose feel of the final season. These videos are a ton of fun, and sometimes I just like to put them on to play in the background when I'm doing chores around the house or whatever. It's like a podcast. They're easy listening and easy and enjoyable viewing. This easily takes the number five spot on our Monster Madness countdown. It's in a massacre! Oh! Number 4. History of Horror from 2007. This is the one that started it all. 
What started off as a one-off idea to celebrate Halloween launched James's tradition that lasted 10 years. The first season of Monster Madness is easily one of the best, and it's basically a horror 101 class, taking you from the silent era all the way up to the 2000s. All your classics are here. Dracula, Frankenstein, The Wolfman, Jaws, Halloween, the list could go on and on. The only thing that prevents this from going higher on the list is that all the videos are really short. On average, they're probably like two minutes or so each, some shorter, some longer, but either way, they aren't as in depth as they would go with each subsequent season. He even revisits a lot of these films later on throughout the years to go more in depth on them. But this year was a great launching pad and provides nearly all of the essential horror films that everyone should check out. It's short and sweet and if you have about an hour of free time just marathon the whole thing. You'll learn a lot and it will prepare you for all the other seasons which are longer and more detailed. I love it though, it's educational, entertaining, and elegant. This first season is one you can really sink your teeth into. It's time for Cinemassacre's Monster Madness. Number 3. Camp Cole from 2010. This season holds a special place in my heart because this was the first season of Monster Madness that I actually watched as the videos were coming out. I had first heard of Cinemassacre during my first fall semester of college, and Monster Madness Camp Cult was not only my introduction to Monster Madness, but to Cinemassacre in general. I watched the new video every day as it came out and then binge watched the first three seasons for the rest of the day. So needless to say, this season is pretty close to my heart because of that. Plus, as the title would suggest, these films aren't exactly classics. They're the weird, bizarre, and in some cases, is absolutely terrible. James discusses ridiculous B-movies like It Came From Hell, where the villain is an evil tree, and Robot Monster with that hilarious gorilla with a space helmet you see walking around every Halloween. He also discusses the confusing and awful history with the Dracula vs. Frankenstein movies and the infamous Troll franchise. I could just list every review he does here because they're all hilarious and ridiculous movies. Night of the Demon, Monkey Shines, Laser Blast, this year is just loaded. This year was the first time James was on camera in Monster Madness in a hosting capacity. As he introduces some of the films, tells jokes, and it's incredibly reminiscent of old school horror hosts. As an added bonus, before the official season got rolling, we were treated to some bonus videos discussing the Universal Monsters VHS collection, the Crestwood House series of horror books, and TNT's Monster Vision, which were all a huge influence on James and why we even got Monster Madness in the first place. This season is jam packed with great laughs, great information, and just all around great entertainment. So I'm going to stop talking about it and just let you go check it out for yourself. Of course, after you finish this video, you know. So go grab your tent and your marshmallows and head over to Camp Cole this Halloween. Number 2. Sequelathon from 2011. This year is the most in-depth and detailed Monster Madness out of all of them. As we discussed with our previous entry, Sequelathon 2, James takes a comprehensive and thorough look at every film in a given franchise. While the second Sequelathon was a good effort, you just can't top the original. Every franchise that's covered here is absolutely legendary. We start off with the original Universal Frankenstein series, from the one that started it all in 1931 all the way to the Monster Mash films of the 40s. Of course, I'm a huge fan of the Universal Monster movie, so this is right up my alley. And you probably all know that I'm a huge vampire buff, so the next series James talks about is also perfect for me, as he goes through all the Hammer Dracula films. These are also great, and I loved hearing all the backstage politics with Christopher Lee not wanting to say his lines, and how he felt that the Dracula character was being wasted. Next, who doesn't love the Nightmare on Elm Street series? Freddy's just such an iconic character, and even when he's in an awful movie, there's always something redeemable about him. To close out the year, James looks at all the Halloween films, except the new one, obviously. I love the Halloween series, and again, even when the movie is bad, there's still something enjoyable about it. This is the king of slasher franchises, and it's the perfect way to close out one of the best Monster Madnesses ever. Because it wouldn't be Halloween if you didn't talk about Halloween. I can only think of one season that can be greater, or even godlike. <laughs> it's Cinemassacre's Monster Madness! <laughs> Number 1. godzilla -thon, 2008 my personal favorite out of all the seasons. And how fitting that the king of all monsters is the king of all monster madnesses. Yes, I know that besides the first one, Godzilla isn't even really a horror franchise. But at the end of the day, the season is just by far the most fun, so it easily takes my top spot. 
James has always been open about his love and passion for the Godzilla series and it really shines through here. All of the reviews are super engaging and incredibly entertaining. This was the second Monster Madness ever and they really took the formula of the first season and improved upon it. Instead of just quick two minute or so videos, this is when they started to get a little longer and more detailed. It covers every Godzilla film made up to that point through the Showa, the Heisei, and the Millennium periods, as well as the American adaptation from 1998. This is a great way to familiarize yourself with the Godzilla franchise if you don't have time to go watch all the films and I don't blame you. James lets you know exactly what you need to know, highlights some of the funniest moments throughout the franchise, and at the end of it all, gives you his recommendations on which ones you should check out. My favorite reviews are the ones that tend to be the worst movies, like Godzilla's Revenge, which is probably the worst in the whole franchise. Godzilla versus the smog monster, which is basically half a weird variety show that makes no sense, and Godzilla vs. Megalon, which introduces everyone's favorite superhero, Jet Jaguar. I love it. My personal favorite Monster Madness, and I can't recommend it enough. It's Cinemassacre's Monster Madness, godzilla -thon. Monster Madness was a key factor of my and a lot of other people's Halloween traditions. I hope that these videos still get the attention they deserve years down the road, and I hope that with my House of Horror videos, I can try to keep that Halloween spirit alive. I recommend that you go to Cinemassacre.com and check out all of the Monster Madness seasons. I can't think of a better way to get into the Halloween spirit, besides, uh, you know, watching my videos too, of course. That is about it for this time, guys. I hope you enjoyed my top 10 list of the best seasons of Cinemassacre's Monster Madness. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you know when I post new videos. And if you give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend, it would be greatly appreciated. I want to thank James Rolfe for creating this series and giving me an inspiration to do what I do. Maybe one day we'll be able to work on something together. Everyone go tweet to him and suggest it. We'll see what he says. And that's about it for this time, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the House of Horrors, and as always, take care and stay spooky.